If you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech, finance, and sports, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted. And go a step further and join the YouTube and membership area for early releases of videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha! It's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another kicking it session. This is a special one, guys. This is this guest is actually the number one requested guest on my channel, which is crazy because she found me randomly. <laughs> so it's just crazy how she's the number one requested guest to come on the Crypto Blood show for a kicking it session. We got her back for a third time. Jane Bond, that's what I call her, Philly Bond Trader, the mystery trader. How are you today? Long time, no see. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Crypto Blood? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So why this, uh, you, you actually sent me this song request way back when we were supposed to have you on months ago. Why this song here? Cyberpunk. I don't even know anything about it. Is a game coming out? What's going on? Yeah, Cyberpunk 2077. It's a cult following kind of video game. I've been a part of that. I've been waiting for the release of this video game for like 10 years. And oh, so because of COVID, the... it was supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to come out this uh, fall, but because of like August or summer, September, because of COVID, it got pushed back to like November. So is this a first person shooter or what, what is it? Um, it's similar to like the game Fallout, but okay. it, instead of like an apocalypse aftermath, you're in a dystopian future, kind of like Blade Runner, something like that, like Robocop, like that kind of future. Kind, kind of like what we're heading toward, I guess. And then there's this element of Grand Theft Auto in it okay. where you're taking on like hit jobs from obscure, like bad people in society and like working your way up through the chain. Right. Yeah, but I just like the theme of it. It's a dystopian future, I like that. Well, there you have it, people. Uh, so maybe when this thing releases, you can find Trader Jane on there, shooting up people, taking cars. Yeah, maybe I'll start a Twitch or something. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> and listen, we got some questions from my uh, YouTube members channel. They wanna know if you have a fans only page. <laughs> I no oh my Jesus no shout I actually re <laughs> shout out the puppet master for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, no I recently just got married and oh, I moved okay. to a different country and I quit my job. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, always an interesting story when it comes to Peter <laughs> Jane. Wait a minute. Now is this the same guy that you were in Philly with? Yes. Okay, all right, all right. I was gonna say that was a fast uh, bait and no. switch in, in marriage. If that was <laughs> no, he's wow. actually um, a foreigner, and he was staying with me during the quarantine. We sat down, made de some decisions. New information came across like my desk. Just pulled the plug and had to leave. Okay, where do we start today? Um, I mean, we've got. I, I think I want to just start with. Tesla, just, this just kind of sums up the mania, the re, this absolute retarded environment we're in right now. I mean, we've got Tesla PE, I think at 100 or no, 1,600 or 1,066 PE ratio, earnings to PE ratio. What what is going like? What is going on here? Um, it appears that this round of bull FOMO seems to be concentrated in the fangs. <clears throat> yeah. And te and it's, it's dragging in some populars like Tesla. Right. AMD, AMD's getting drug up there. Nvidia's getting drug. Like, look at these charts. Look at the PEs. <laughs> like, look at their market cap. <laughs> yeah, it just seems that this round of FOMO before like another rug pull. It's, gonna, it's concentrated in these. You say another rug pull. I, I don't see it. You help help me understand. Um, no, not like as big as in March. I came a came around on my opinion after that. After learning some new things about the future, I suppose. Yeah, I don't. I don't see like a massive like rug pull. I don't see it as a bear market. <laughs> okay, so you're in the camp now. Uh, of the individuals that think this is going to be a massive melt up in the equities markets 
and the bond markets are going to go up as well. How, how, how does that play out? I don't know what's going on with the bond market anymore because every new hit with stimulus, the environment changes. It's just a constant environment change where the Federal Reserve is just constantly bidding. So I don't touch it. I don't trade it anymore personally. I have moved on. Mm, mm. So I, I want you, you hinted toward a little, you said that you moved out of the country <laughs> and you got married, but you said that you got a piece of information uh, that pretty much prompted you to make this move. Am I correct? What piece of information, if you can share with the audience, uh, you have that made you make such a drastic move as that? I started to see partnerships between companies, like big blue chip companies mm -hmm. that nobody's talking about. I'll give you an example, like Cisco. So this was the due diligence looking for a trade or an opportunity on the chart on Cisco. And I thought, you know, it dumped after earnings report. It's consolidating down here. Is this really a dead like boomer kind of stock or is there like more to this? And I started looking and they're partnered with like something called Nodal. And it's like, what the fuck is that? And then I'm starting to see that they're partnered with like Ledger. And then I'm kind of like going down these rabbit holes and I'm finding out how all these companies in the backdrop, if you dig really deep, they are pumping tons of money and building the internet of things, the 5G and the blockchain. And I am now a shit coiner. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wish I had my soundboard. I don't have my soundboard set up for my live stream. I, I need to hit the gunshots real quick. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, you sent, you Dude, I'm a link me? marine now. I'm a link marine. <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah. How, how four months has changed. You didn't even know what, you barely knew anything about Bitcoin. Didn't want to touch it. Now, now you're into altcoins. So, Explain to us um, further about this Cisco Ledger link thing that you kind of t put together. I still don't fully understand it. I just see enough money moving around behind the scenes that tells me this is the new paradigm trade. Like this is the trade that people go back and say, man, I wish I got in on Amazon when they were just competing with Barnes and Noble you know, that kind of thing. Like they didn't realize it was a new era of e-commerce and it was just going to destroy and change the landscape of how we like buy and sell things <laughs> and find like new material goods and services on like a global scale. So I'm realizing that this is the new trade to get on for the coming years. And, wh and so why like, smart that? contracts make sense. Yes. And, absolutely. you know, I have some experience working into the Department of Defense, like contracting. Yes. And back, there were departments that were kind of already working on this, but more on the infrastructure level. Mm. And it's starting to make sense where all these countries are pumping out stimulus and it's for like infrastructure. Like, take the Philippines for an example. Like their government's like, you know, we need to build up our infrastructure. Let's print money too. And, but it's all being concentrated if you start looking into it on telecom and on buying a whole bunch of like encrypted government grade like servers. <laughs> it's to build up this cyberpunk world. That's <laughs> so there's so just too much too too much money, too many big names too many partnerships going on to, I just can't believe I overlooked this for this many years. It's embarrassing. Hey, I tried, hey, I tried to get you to at least <laughs> look at it. Back, back oh, is, is it this your, I told you so moment. My, I told you so moment. <laughs> um, chain link. So you're, you're, you're into that now. Uh, what, so I guess my question to you would be, where do you see, have you done any price analysis, any, any like fundamental research um, on 
you know, because you know, Chainlink has maybe a circulation or a supply of I think uh, one billion link altogether. Uh, currently, there's 350 million link in circulation. Have you crunched any numbers? Do you have any projections on where you see this thing going if it continues to, you know, grab more market share? It's the fifth biggest cryptocurrency now by market cap. What What's your take on Chainlink? Maybe say a year, two, or three out. That I haven't done okay. those things that you said. I'm still learning and just kind of, I was waiting. Okay, when I first learned about Chainlink and the impact it's going to have and how many people want it, mm -hmm. um, I think this is one of those, this, this is a huge flow of information. Look, think of this from a trader's perspective. See, I didn't really know about all this until I really took the time to dig in and see those partnerships, like from an investing trading perspective. Right. And how many, how long, it, how much longer do, you know, we all have before everyone else figures it out, mm -hmm. before like pension funds are getting involved. Right. So that's why I don't think I can really put a price like on a linear model. I think it's an exponential model. Yeah. Because, like, the FOMO pumps, like, start rushing in once people figure it out. So take, for an example, Cisco. You look at the chart, it looks like dog shit. It's beaten down. But if you look at their last earnings report, it wasn't really that bad. I think they had, like, some executive step down that, like, fudded it. So here I am buying, like, calls on the cheap, calendar dating months out and rolling out because I know – really what's going on with Cisco and their partnerships. Like I have faith in that. It's like now I can buy the dip on companies that I have faith in. So yeah, I, I guess you could say now my new strategy, I'm still building it. I'm off on my own trading my own money. I've taken on a few Padawans to help them, but our new portfolio now, like we're, we're calling it the Blade Runner ETF. And it's like, just keep buying the dip on these companies because they're involved with the blockchain, internet of things, and cryptocurrencies. Hmm. Like, you can't go wrong. They're not going to fail. They're not going to go under. So I'm kind of wow. like taking that approach. So I think, like, I'm going to be buying a lot of Ethereum and, like, Chainlink and maybe a few others I'll speculate in. But I'm taking – this is my strategy and works for me. Like, I trade options, so I'm finding a way – to do that do you get what i'm saying absolutely absolutely yeah and, and you're going in the right direction uh finally you get you get it like so blockchain is the future it is internet 3.0 it is going to be the infrastructure backbone for most of everything that we um we use right so i, I want to mm -hmm. get back to your again you, you said chain link and cisco but is that really the reason why you left? That doesn't sound like enough for a, a person to leave the United States. And um, Well, at work, I was just seeing the people I'm working around. And I'm like, you guys are so behind the curve. Like, because yeah, I was figuring this out on my, on, my, on, on my own time. When I get home from work, I would have a couple of beers, talk to people online, research articles, going through investor slides just endlessly for hours and i'm just like with this knowledge i have i i know i can make it trading our own money i mean it's just too easy now <laughs> so did so did you just did you so i just leave? wanted to leave yeah oh, okay so you just left because of that oh and even... philadelphia is not safe anymore dude like the neighborhood i was in it is it's become a hellscape hmm Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, um, Trader Jane, I'm gonna have to change your name now. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Trader, Trader yeah, Blockchain. What, what, what is that crap? Right. What is a bond? Like, that's, <laughs> old. that's That's antiquated. A financialization <laughs> mechanism. So, wow. So Ethereum and Chainlink. Okay. That's good. Even with Chainlink. There's something called like white box or white something. It has something to do with like firewall and security. Yeah. I mean, I don't Chainlink know what it is. is. Do you know? No, I'm, I'm not familiar okay. with that one. 
Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. But you know, Chainlink has run up. I don't know when you got in the Chainlink. You're probably oh, I didn't get in yet. Oh, you haven't. Okay. When I first was uh, like really learning about it, and I wanted to take a position, but I when I, I watched it run up from like seven dollars yep. all the way to like twenty something, and I'm like, oh, I kind of missed the boat on that. Like, I'll wait for like the pullback, and then here's the pullback that I'm kind of just trying to determine. Is this the pullback I'm looking for, or is there more pullback? Like, I don't know. I don't know yet. Yeah. I, I oh, think, okay. though, big picture, I don't think it really matters. Big picture yeah. doesn't matter. I just want to hold some of this. Yeah, I don't so, want no, to I be mean, a no-coiner. No the, the last, last like, peak to the left, peak to the right in chain link looks to be, like, around $8.71. But I don't even know if we're going to get back to that. My assessment of chain link has to do more so okay. in this... This it's interesting that you bring up Cisco and that component to Chainlink because I had no idea of that relationship. So that's interesting. I think my audience You're going to start going down the rabbit holes, CB. I'm serious. You're you're going to start finding companies like you've heard of. It's right in front of your face and you think it's some dying boomer company that's going to get washed out in debt. Nope. It's like they have all the banks behind them. <laughs> They've got Department of Defense contractors working with them. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna come across hundreds of them. Okay, so and my, then you look my, at their charts, and it's interesting because it's like they've just been beaten down, and nobody cares about these companies anymore. But they're gonna in about six months or a year. Mm. So my assessment of Chainlink has always always been associated to the DeFi uh, phenomenon. I don't know if you're familiar with that whole wave that's been going crazy as of the last six to 12 months. Are you familiar with DeFi and that that's going to be a disruptor as well? Yes. Uh, I am still learning about all of that. Yeah. So, but DeFi I do know is, the importance of it. Yeah. DeFi is going to disrupt the whole banking system. There will be no need for your traditional banking system because everything from lending to uh to putting up collateral is all done on a uh, through a smart contract and it's just completely circumventing the traditional banking system and it is booming it's only a 6.5 or 6.6 .6 billion dollar market cap of uh, the DeFi in, in general that's it 6.6 .6 billion at the time of recording it is in the early stages and uh chainlink was part of that because chainlink acts as an oracle to help for data feeds and data pools on these various DeFi platforms. So check into that aspect of it as well. And maybe that'll open you up to other projects that are associated or are actually DeFi projects. Yeah, thank you. Like I'm sure I'll find more companies related to that now and go down yeah, all will. those rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely will. You know, I've got a few questions from some of the YouTube members in my room. Um, I'll start with Chavez Thomas. He wants to know the housing market. What will 50K get him? Uh, and what is your assessment of the uh, housing market and real estate? Is it, are, are, are you looking at that as a potential? Oh, uh, it is very complex when you start looking globally. Is he more USA centric? US, yes. And, uh, I hear people saying, oh, I want to move to Texas. And it's like, ah, uh, Texas is kind of getting ran over by people escaping California and like Seattle and the Upper East Coast. Um, 50K, I mean, you're going to have to start looking at places like in Kansas or Wyoming or Oklahoma. I don't know. I mean, do you want to live in a city around people or do you want to live in the middle of nowhere? Well, and then you my, have to consider property taxes. You have to consider, like, is that area going to be safe? <laughs> yeah, so, but in general, like, with all this money printing, uh, do you do you see the real estate market being pulled up with the equities market? Uh, because yeah. Because there will be so much excess but capital. What I am seeing is a fling out of these urban cities, and right. a lot of homes are getting snatched up on the countryside. Like I've personally driven through and seen it. Okay, that makes sense. So maybe play the whole- So there's like these microcosms of inner city kind of like collapsing, but it's not like full on collapsing though, because it's like the rent prices are going down to attract renters to keep them there. 
And then the people that are selling their homes and getting out, they're actually getting snatched up by foreigners. The new wave of generational wealth, like young wealth is coming in and buying those. Like New York City is not going to fall and crumble, you know, it's not going to go up in flames like one of those Hollywood movies. I don't think housing's collapsing. I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I can't see that either. I, I so know, many I people are running around and moving. So many people are realizing, oh, I'm going to work telecom permanently. They're like, why am I living next to crackheads and paying right. four grand a month, you know, for rent? Yes. <laughs> They're realizing, yes. let's go move. Another thing to look at is international. Um, I know our travel document, our passport is kind of worthless right now due to COVID. But I think you can still get into certain countries. I don't know. Take a look at that. Um, I have Go somewhere another. where there's 10% taxes <laughs> and you live on the beach and you can yeah. live like a king for under a grand a month. Go do that. A lot of people are doing that. Mm. Okay. Sarthak in the uh, YouTube members room uh, asked, is, uh, did you lose a lot of money from the shorts in, mar in, in the uh, equities markets? No. Or how did you pan out with that? Um, I, I day trade and short swing trade. So when I realize the trends against me, I quickly flip over. And that's how I have been in this environment. I mean, for months I was thinking, is it going to turn back down? Is it? But I keep making money on calls. I'm confused. And I was like, I guess I'll just go with this. Yeah, I, I, lost, a, I lost a bag on, on put options. Uh, and this was only a month ago. I'm so far out. Oh, yeah, of money. I lost some money. Yeah, I lost money too, but I quickly had to flip the other way. Yeah, yeah. I was too busy making uh, more money in the crypto market. So I'm just. Gonna right. Let those, I'm just going to let those expire out of the money. But uh, yeah, I feel you on that. I have another one from uh, Yonasi. He's asking gold slash silver. What's your outlook year, uh, end of year for gold and silver? I think up, but maybe not for the reasons you think. So, you know, there's this idea being shelled that, you know, gold, gold and silver is like real money. Yeah. And, you, and, you know, and you can pass it down to your kids generation after generation. And then it's, you know, an anti-government stance to hold it. I don't think that's why the price is going up or even holding up here. Honestly, I think it is because there's going to be a lot of infrastructure being built, a lot of construction booming around the world, I think, coming up here soon, coming out of this COVID. And, you know, gold and silver are used as an industrial utility. So there you go. Like, it just made, it's just like the lumber situation. Have you looked at like the lumber prices? No. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's like spiking up like over $800, like on the futures market. Wow. It's insane. And it's because... You know, because of COVID, you had all these mills, like, shut down. Okay. And then you had all these people fleeing cities and, like, wanting to buy homes. And you had people sitting around their house like, man, we should remodel the bathroom and build a new deck. So you have all these people scheming and then rushing out high demand for lumber. Got and then do because of the mills being shut down, then the price, like, spikes. But it's going to come down. I think, like, there's probably some more room on the lumber futures to go up, but... It's just going to come crashing down once like inventory catch, catches back up. Gotcha. Well, what's your? So I think maybe gold and silver is kind of like that. I think they're running. The prices are going off of the similar scenario as to why lumber is, just maybe okay. not as ex extreme. Okay. I don't know. I'm just confused. I'm kind of looking at all the markets differently now, <laughs> the past why couple months, and why is that? Oh, just like realizing like really blockchain and how this kind of changes everything, and which companies are going to thrive and die through it. I mean, the same thing happened with e-commerce. E I mean, imagine knowing that like Nike and like Amazon, like the people um, selling their things online, driving the internet traffic, embracing e-commerce, those ones made it. Imagine like just shorting and buying puts on like Macy's, JCPenney, Sears you had to have known the paradigm shift to place those trades. Right. And right now, I think we're going through the same thing. Winners and losers are being picked right now. What's your outlook on uh, interest rates? That's what Zed asked. Uh, going through 2021, how much longer can the U.S. fend off inflation? And when crypto will, and will crypto moon? I think we now know Trader James on the crypto train. 
Uh, but <laughs> tell us about interest rates. I know you're not really paying attention to the bond market much anymore, <laughs> but do you have like I a think... macro kind of view of it? Yes, I think that they're going to keep interest rates suppressed down low as possible. They're going to let inflation run semi-hot, but I think at a certain point in time, they're going to start raising rates again. But how does that so work? I don't, I don't. If, if they start raising rates, they can't pay the debt that they're, you know, pay the, the interest on the debt, right? Or will they I don't think M&T people it? realize how big the debt can get. Okay. <laughs> like people are already talking like, oh, the government's going to go insolvent soon and can't pay the interest on the debt. It's like, you guys have no fucking clue. Like, like we're talking debt expansion times like 10. It's gonna happen. Just watch. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. because so they gotta build. They gotta leave, build this all up. Where does that leave U.S. citizens? Where does that leave the common, everyday person in America? Will they just kind of shift with that? Will Will wages increase to kind of circumvent a little bit of that and, and balance it out, or will it get worse as far as the wealth disparity? I think uh, a lot of people are gonna uh, be fucked. I don't know how to say it nicely. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you think? Do you, what do you think? I, I think uh, it's a combination of things. It's it's the inflation, right? That's robbing the wealth, but it's also the tech that's robbing the wealth. When I mean tech, I'm talking about like, you know, the human capital. There, there's going to be less and less necessity for human capital as we go into this quantum computing, AI, blockchain world. Uh, I just see UBI on the way. I see UBI on the horizon. You know, universal basic income. It's just no way to have all of these people out of out of work with structural unemployment occurring. I think COVID really started it, in my opinion. I see uh, people definitely their their standard of living just dwindling as we go forward. But at some point, and I'm realizing like holding and buying these shit coins is like giving people a lifeboat out of that situation. I'm really coming to that conclusion. Like I sent you a picture um, on your phone, like of the ledger. Yeah. (laughs) Nano X, like I bought one. (laughs) I just got that shit, man. I told my YouTube uh, (laughs) chat room and telegram. I I sent them that pic, that picture. They went crazy. They went crazy. Yeah. (laughs) That is insane. So I can't believe that. Um, one more from Yonisaya. He asks, in, uh, if in fact more layoffs are planned by companies after 10-1. Like October 1st? Yeah, uh, October. Who uh, who took PP money and promised to not lay off prior to 10-1? How does this bode for the state of future stimulus and housing crisis? Does this push out the timelines? of her five phases. Let's talk about the five phases. I forgot about that. Where Mm -hmm. have you rethought that whole five phases? Are we still going through that? Kind of let us know. Well, remember like the, the last like ending phase was kind of this, the general population has a big distrust in the government and it becomes like mainstream. I think like we're, we're inching to that. that. That's still playing out, I believe. Okay. And, and I mean, what do you look? think? What, I mean, do you look? think public? I mean, a lot of public unrest. I think a I'm, lot I'm of concerned about November and the election because yeah. I, feel like, I feel like it's a uh, it's a lose lose. I was it, just gonna say that you know, it's a lose lose <laughs> because uh, you're gonna have people so disappointed and so enraged by either either candidate, right? Um, I think personally, Biden is worse. Cause he can barely think for himself. I think he's suffering from some. Type oh, let's of be real. You're you're voting for Kamala Harris when you're voting for Biden. Right. Let's be real here. <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly. You're proxy voting for Kamala Harris, and I ain't doing that. But how do you like? What do you see that whole? How do you see that playing out? The whole November election thing. It's a circus show, and I think it's a lose lose. I agree with you. Neither side's gonna accept it. I mean, you already have Trump coming out there saying. He's already not, he's going to be suspicious of whatever the outcomes are. Like he's already saying, if I don't win, I don't accept the outcome. And then his voter base is going to jump on board with that narrative and then flip to the other side. It's the same thing. Do you see civil unrest? Do you see a, a it's civil so fucking war? Polarized. Do you see a, it is. Do you see a civil war coming out of this election? 
Is that possible? Or is a little that kind of extreme. I don't, I don't know. I think it's a little extreme. What do you think? Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, that the riots and everything from that incident really, to me, just made things even worse and and allowed people to see, oh, we can really get violent. We can get have have unrest. I think you're going to see that again. I think you're going to see more riots after the announcement of the next president. Of the oh yeah, I agree. I think that will happen. I think maybe civil war won't happen if they roll out UBI because then it like pacifies everyone, right? Yes. To a point. Hence why. So it like, kind of kicks the can down away. the road. Absolutely. And why would they not? That's what they're good at, kicking the can down the road and, and leaving the problem for another politician. You, you should really check out, I want you to check out Predict and I'll send you a link, I'll text it to you, but it's a site where you can uh, basically um, gamble on events. Oh, I know. Occur. I've done that. I bet on AMLO winning in Mexico and I bought the dip when Herr Bolsonaro was shot during his campaigning in Brazil. Oh, yeah. You and he told came me out winning. That. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I know Predict It. Well, okay. <laughs> what are you putting money down on Predict It right now? I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to do a. Uh, I think Donald's going to win. I, I actually think I Donald's think... going to win. Uh, so I'm gonna put yeah. my, my my bets on that. But yeah, this is uh this is a wild wild world we live in right now. I guess I want to finish up with um, kind of give us your strategy. You know, what are you what are you doing for the next twelve months out? How how do you view the markets, the world, geopolitical? Just kind of give us an overview, a macro view of it. Well, right now I'm still formulating a strategy to profit off this, the shifting tides. And I'm doing so via companies involved using options in the derivatives market. I think I'm also going to be buying Ethereum on dips, chain link on dips, mm -hmm. speculating on a few more I find and come across. But a lot of my time has just been researching the connections and the money behind the scenes working on this. Nice. Nice. And taking positions there. So, yeah, it's like a proxy way. Right, right. No, that's a that's a neat strategy that, I, again, I've never even thought about doing myself. It's neat. And we appreciate you kind of putting the connecting the dots with. Cisco yeah, join the Cisco I, Disco with me. Get some Cisco, Cisco calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might have to do that. I literally will may have to do that this week. So uh, that's cool. Any any last words? I want to keep this pretty brief today because I'll definitely want to have you come on more often to give us updates and uh, share your knowledge and what you're finding as you, as you travel down this rabbit hole called blockchain. So uh, what's your final thoughts, though, for today? Final thoughts are thank you for having me. Um, thank you to your supporters and listeners, and I will keep you all updated on my new findings. Cool, cool. And uh, one last one from my man, Puppet Master. He is a troll. He asked, uh, <laughs> what, what was the cause of your disappearance? Was it Rona? Were you kidnapped? Job found out she was leaking info. Is she a CIA agent? Are you a CIA agent? Trader Jane. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we gotta go. Master. We gotta we gotta cut this call. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you Puppet have master it. needs to be shut down. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's asking too many questions, man. <laughs> oh my god. Well there you have it, people. Ladies and gentlemen, Trader Jane, she's back finally. I thought she I didn't know what the hell happened to her. But she's back. Glad she's safe. She's married now. So all you pervs out there ain't got no chance. No chance, my friend. No chance. Make sure you guys hit the like button, share, and subscribe. And of course, this video is going out to the YouTube members first. So if you want to see that, make sure you join the YouTube members room on Crypto Blood's channel. We out of here, people. We're going to rock out to this cyberpunk 2077. We out of here. Ha! Thank <laughs> you.